Hello team! Welcome back to Miss Clicks D&D Seaborn. Thank you for waiting the last couple minutes. We're just a little bit late. Uh, you know, the seas can get choppy this time of year. That's just <laughs> what happens. <laughs> Wait for my next pun. Though. I know. You, Jen has I been planning this pun for you. So, look out. Guard your funny bones. Yep. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be a doozy. It's gonna be a... <laughs> Tempest of a joke. I don't know. Anyways, this is a live Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> gameplay show that we do every week. This is our fourth episode of Miss Clicks D and D Seaborn. We play second edition with a little bit of homebrew, and um, we have the characters whose names are listed right here and if you don't know who they are there are a few resources for you you can find them on the misclicks twitter all of them you can check out our previous episodes on youtube as well as the ship's log or the sea log or whatever etoileon is calling it these days but he takes amazing notes and writes down the story as it has happened before so you can catch up that way as well but this week we find ourselves still on the Spice Islands, namely the island of Embershore and the city of Voluton. And uh, where? what do we do, Neil? You do find yourself uh, in these places. Oh my, what have I done? What have, oh my God, what have I done? It's <laughs> fine, it's fine, nothing's broken. Um, you are on the... The island of Embershore in the town of Voluton near Mount Value, Suvius, and Mount Gull. <laughs> you have been working your hardest to get this town back into shape after a terrible storm came through, killed off two-thirds of your population, wrecked your town, destroyed your fields and orchards, and you've been plagued the entire time by this pesky force of kobolds, these small, diminutive, dog-like humanoids that number in the hundreds and hundreds but they're kind of cowardly. They're easy to scare off, but they can be dangerous in large numbers and they can be quite ferocious at times. So far though, you guys have had really good luck dealing with kobolds. You've just, I guess they haven't been as much of a threat to you as you would have expected. Don't get, don't get too comfortable with how things are. That's because I am kobold slayer. That's you not are. We're just awesome. I literally Possibly. spanked one to death. I crit spanked it. Yes, you did. With the flat of a battle axe, I want to say. Or My something halberd. Like halberd. Flat of a halberd. Mm -hmm. Spanked his butt off. Mm -hmm. um, anyway. Sorry about it. It's okay. You don't need to apologize for these things. Um, do we just want to hop straight into game? Mm hmm. Cool. I had, a, I had one of those days where I need to smash things as a minotaur, Neil. <laughs> Let me smash mm. things. I, you want to smash things, good. Before we get going, I still had, I think, three or two spells to try for from last episode. I think three. Yes, you have two spells to learn, if I'm not mistaken. Is it just two or three? Two per week. Yeah, but last I get... week I only did one, I think. So you said, oh no. Oh no! No, but I... Look oh at no! The VOD, look, look at the VODs, Neil. <laughs> look at the VODs, Neil! <laughs> look at the VODs! Neil, look at the Get box. your two spells. God damn it, Neil. I'll tell you what, um, maybe you can get a bonus because I will help you learn your detect magic Ooh. spell. Ooh. Can he do that? We can, uh, we can learn it together. Can it he doesn't help He's her a bard, he can sing an inspiring song about like and it can stick in her head like a jingle, you know? That's, but if you're trying so to memorize something for school and your friend is standing next to you singing an inspiring song. Yes. No, 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 that's Kofra. I want to, to learn test. it too. Are you going to remember that? No, no, that's it. Kofra. I want to learn it too. Don't it, tell anyone that. It does not assist. It totally does, Neil. I have it totally. Does not the point assist. is not to assist. The point is, I also want to attempt to learn Detect Magic. Well, that's fine. If you would like to learn, that's fine. You're going to need to borrow the book separately from her and learn out of it that way. Can't two people, like, learn Detect Magic at the same time from the same book? No. Nope. Not in the Neoliverse. Not not what? at the exact same time. You can't like you're both. You'd be flipping pages back and forth. It. Have you ever tried to study out of the same book as your friend? Yes. Magic work. is more than two pages. Magic is more than two pages. Okay. People are it, agreeing. You said they can agree all they want as long as I'm the DM. This does not fly. 
I'm just I'm just putting out there like game mechanics aside. You keep asking these these questions you think are rhetorical. Like if you had a friend standing next to you and singing to help you study, do you think it would actually help? The it answer wouldn't. is it I have no done that would... and it actually did help. And Your then you're like, could you study you. from the same book? And I'm like, yes, I have done that. It did actually okay, help. Let me put it to you. Is it more efficient to have your own book or to share a book with a friend? What is the easier way to study? Hey, studying with friends is actually encouraged in school because you guys can like cover other points that you don't know about. Just saying, Neil. Just, Just saying. saying. No. Solo activity. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got I got excited. I started yelling. I'm sorry, chat. It's okay. Well, I'll give you something to kill in a few minutes. Please. I picked my first spell to try. All right. What are you breath. rolling for? I'm going to roll for a lasting breath. Okay. Um, and if you fail to learn this, you cannot try again until you hit level two as a wizard. Yeah. Um, Go for it. So what was the... It's a 75% chance, so we want... It's whatever the chance to learn spell yeah, is good. underneath your intelligence subsidiary yeah. score. Oh, my God. Oh. Life. Albert, you can't comprehend. It doesn't... Mm. It doesn't make sense. I hate how, how do you keep know. your breath being held? Ugh. I don't know. Try something else. Uh, all right. I'm going to try. Huh. I'm hesitating between two. Damn it. Also, are you giving Bruno access to your spell book so he can learn things? I told him he can try to learn the tech magic. Okay. Okay. Bruno, would you I, like to I learn already it? learned it, FYI, but I will take your offer to like brush up on it a bit. Very nice. Um, what do you got for us, Albert? The darkest of Alberts. Oh. Um, can I consult the party or should I just make this choice alone? Make this choice alone. This is, this is part of your identity as a, a character. All right. Expidious retreat. <laughs> <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> Geniest spell there is. The what? Nothing. I didn't. I certainly didn't. No. Roll, roll to learn. Of course, yeah. this one is gonna work. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Perfect. I'm ready perfect. to run away. What up? <laughs> okay. Um, wizard, the spellcasters, memorize your spells for the day as we hop into game here. Sure. Real right. quick. Here's my uh, learn detect magic spell. Or roll. Okay, but don't you already have it? Uh, supposedly. Ah. He was saying oh. he already had it, Neil. Got it. What is your chance to learn spells, Trump? Oh, it's so not 75. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's 55. Yeah. So you, you brush up on detect magic, um, but it, it's a little confusing still. Uh, you can try again next time you level up. Um, um, so. Do you want me to learn Detect Magic as one of my spells? Because I get three spells. She does have uh, three spells per day. When, if you tried to consult you, uh, are you consulting us? Yeah. Officially? Okay. Don't worry, I have it covered. <laughs> Why would you cover the spell when you are trying to learn it? That seems inefficient. Oh, no, I already know it. I was just uh, trying to learn the finer points. Remember, I already found out that that statue that the kobolds were, the shrine thing that was kind of magical, where the spiders were. I do indeed remember. I don't believe you. I'm going to learn to detect magic. Just in case. I like to be prepared, you know. Yeah, I mean, that, that's understandable. Sometimes there's two things that we need to detect, so. Sure. It's hard to have a backup. Exactly why. Great. So, um, looking around the town, there's really only one thing that needs to be done. I mean, there's lots of little things that need to be done, but the big thing that needs to be done are the spices and dyes. These are the spice islands, after all, and you guys, uh, your crops have kind of been wrecked. And now that you're getting your, your dock rebuilt, which the rest of the town is taking care of now that you've negotiated with the mermen properly, um, you still need to, to have something to actually trade with. And all the spices and dyes in town have been wrecked. So a foraging party has been gathering, waiting to go out near Mount Gull and get more spices and dyes, but they didn't want to go without an armed escort because of the damn kobolds in and around the town. 
Before we go, can we do a couple things in town? Of course. All right. Um. So I remember that we brought back some spears. So I'd like sure to make sure that the town offers them to the merman while we're gone. Is that something we can do? As a little recap, in case you missed last week, we met some mermen. They made town. They made a home where our deck dock used to be. And we tried to rebuild our dock, and they kept ruining it, so we made a deal with them. What were the terms of our deal we made with them? Uh, they bring us, like, fish and stuff and possibly pearls uh, in exchange for help in gathering uh, knives and harpoons and spears. Uh, just um, nice stuff for them. And we're also supposed to help them find another place that they can stay at so that they can move. Something, like, closed off and safe for them. So okay. that we can build our docks again. Uh, and they were willing to bring us pearls if we bring them nice stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Did we already get that copper to the smith and we've got that thing going? Yes, the copper has gotten to the smith. He is doing his best to uh, smelt it down from ore to ingots and then to work it into the various different bronzes and brasses that you guys need for tools mostly bronze brass is more decorative so i'd like to suggest that as the town we give a couple of these things that we amassed uh to the merman maybe not the ore but possibly either the steel dagger bronze dagger or the two stone spears uh, maybe at least the two stone spears because i don't think stone spears are that amazing uh, I think the... stone spears would insult them. Those are the kobolds, right? No, no. Oh. The stone spears are like the little kobold weapons. Oh. They're not even full six-foot spears. Oh. They're like four-foot spears. Because they said spears. spears, so I just assumed that spears were spears. But... No, no, these are little dinky D4 oh. damage kobold spears that break on an 18, 19, or 20. So I suggest that we give away one dagger, the one that's lesser words between bronze and steel as a sign of goodwill, hoping that we might get some pearls. Sure. As for the steel dagger, which I, um, I'm imagining is better or more valuable, yes? Yes. Uh, I'll start using that one. I'll be like, oh yeah, I can use this. Uh, but I do trade in my bronze dagger. I don't know how the, how the town feels about it. I could sure use a dagger too. Well, um, let's quickly go over the difference between bronze and steel then. Um, I had originally tried a different way of making this work and it wasn't working out. So the bronze and steel work this way. If you are using a steel weapon against bronze armor, your steel weapon has a plus one to hit. If someone is using a bronze weapon against steel armor, the steel armor has a plus one to AC against the bronze. So basically in a bronze versus steel match, the steel always has a bonus of one, regardless of which side it's on. Cool. So it, you know, if you're just fighting someone in leather armor, it doesn't make that much of a difference. But that steel dagger is going to be super useful if there's someone in bronze armor, or you know, steel armor is going to be super valuable because everyone's going to be carrying bronze weapons. And uh, my daggers are just called daggers. Are that, they bronze? Then they're bronze. Okay. I'll Everything is considered the to be last bronze. Time you used your dagger, ones. Albert. When is the last time you used your dagger? Uh, last time we adventured. Wow. I don't think so. It's true. Hmm. Are you sure you weren't shooting a bow? I'm absolutely certain. I don't recall any of this, and I have a great memory. Actually, I have a 17-inch memory. Okay, I, I will tell you that I'm not lying. For realsies. I guess I'll trust you, but I might borrow it a couple times. Sure. <laughs> What's mine is yours. That sounds about right. Uh, so I recommend that we give away at least one bronze dagger to the merman, and that we buy some torches, because we're out of torches, yes, everybody. Yes, we are going through torches. Thank you for that good memory. I think we uh, ran out of torches. Yeah. See? I told you I got good memory. Uh, so, Neil, can we buy some torches? Yes, they are one copper each. What, not two copper for us? 
One copper. Do you want to pay double for your torches? I don't think you understand how haggling works. <laughs> no, no, that was... He's commenting Arcasm. on your previous <laughs> price hike. Um... Where was the price? Where were the prices hiked earlier? Charges is double for oil. It was a rare commodity. You're right. Actually, I forgot about that. Yeah, two copper for torches. Good call, oh, Trump. Congrats. Thanks, buddy. Congrats, Trump. Dude, yep. not cool. I had completely forgotten about the oil shortage on the island, but you're absolutely right. I break something. Like, what do you I, break? I, like, if there's, like, a counter, I, mm -hmm. like, I, like, kick the corner of it and, like, break the wood. Like, not enough to, like, make the counter fall. I just, like, put a hole in it with my hoof. And I just stare at them. Like this. Um, I only memorized Mac one thing I today. The general and store and goes, What are you doing? You just can't go around breaking my counters. Get out. The rest of your friends can buy the equipment, but get out. <laughs> I just stand there and stare at her. And then I say, one copper, one torch. Two copper. I kick the thing again. Oh, no. That's it. No more. I'm not selling you any more equipment until you fix this. I just stand there and stare at her. Nice going, she guys. She puts her hands on her hips and looks frumpy. Mm. Mm. I put uh, my hands on my hips. Bell, I'm sure we can handle this cost. Uh, I I'm going to need to borrow one, uh, a few copper, though. <laughs> this is pathetic, is what I say. Maribel just woke up on the wrong side of the bed today, and she's just standing there staring. She has no intention of doing anything. She's just standing there. I'm sorry, I don't lend money to people who already owe me. Maybe you should give me that steel dagger and then I can... Maybe... How much is a steel dagger worth, Neil? Um, it would be worth 10 gold. Ah, then maybe, maybe I can waive your 1 gold debt and even cover for torches. Are you kidding me? We have so... Once we adventure enough, this copper will feel like a pittance. Yeah. I... Back in the day on the docks, I got showered in copper and some silver and gold by performing. But Why would you shower in copper? That would not clean you. That's a very good question. Why would you? I say while smirking. You have it's, very strange ways. of speech. Hmm. I have much to learn. You do. That kind of like disheartens Maribel and she like loses her resolve. And she just kind of like hands. So how? I have you... eight copper pieces, and I just hand them all to Trump, and I walk out of the store. How about you lend me? How about you give me the steel dagger until you can pay your debt, and then I can cover you for some more. Did you hear that I gave you eight copper, Trump? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. All right, four torches, please. Not until your friend fixes my counter. I'm already outside. How broken is it? Uh, it's not that broken. It would probably take like, you know, uh, like six copper worth of supplies and a half hour to fix. How about I cover the cost and we'll call it good. I take out my hand looking at the dagger. <laughs> are, are we okay with that? I I'm sorry for the trouble my friends caused, but we're in a bit of a hurry and we're... Uh, needing to defend the town from kobolds and get our town back together. I'm sure you can overlook this. Here, yes, here's, here's the six six it. Roll a charisma check for him, Neil. Uh, yeah, roll your own charisma check. See how influential you can be here. She's kind of pissed. So you're going to need more than a 21 to, to convince her. A <laughs> 21? Oh, please. Oh, please. Says Oops, she rolled sorry. a seven. Team. Uh-uh. Fix it. No no more business between you and me until you fix my counter. You guys have to learn that you can't just go around bossing the town around just because you're part of the warrior class. Alright, very well, very well. I uh I kneel down to where uh to where it was kicked and start putting it together. 
Okay. It takes you a little while. You've got to go around, like, you know, get some wood here, grab a nail, pound it in with a hammer. It, it eventually gets done, but it takes six copper worth of supplies and All right. half hour. I'll buy time. one torch. You can buy a torch. She gives you your torch with a smile on her face and says, Thank you. Okay, guys. Thanks for. We're going to go very far nothing. with that one torch, that's for sure. Let's head out without further ado. Okay. So you get in the middle of town with all of the gatherers. I, have the last thing. I know I'm annoying, mm -hmm. but I know yes. things and I need to deal with them or else I forget. Uh, Do it. Since I leveled up, I can try my luck again at the chest. The chest. Uh, the oh, you're lockpicking. Yeah. So yes. I want to give it a second shot. Roll me. What is your open locks percentage? Uh, now it's 65. Okay, roll me an open locks. This is a good lock on here, so the difficulty uh, reduces your chance by 20%. Oh, shit. Hey, Jen, be sure to just, long. like, speak as loudly as you possibly can, because the okay. chat's still having problems hearing you. And chat, to address your concerns, we will try to fix Jen's audio issue during the break. But until then, Jen, oh. yell. 65 minus 20. Yeah, is still a success. So we... It opens, everybody. It does open. As I do it, it goes. And then I raise it up, and it is. Well, it's a heavy chest because it's made out of bronze. Okay. Um, but inside of it are these completely destroyed and ruined silk uh, bolts. Uh, it's just the the seawater and the sand has completely destroyed them. They're pretty much worthless. It might make like, you know, you could make some like pocket squares out of them, or maybe some bandages. But in terms of clothing, they're mm -hmm. ruined. Um, as you search through the chest, you also find a small felt bag with a crystal shard pendant on a silver cord inside of it. I immediately put it on. Okay. Does it look uh, girly? If that is your association girly? of girly, then it does, but uh, I don't think it is innately girly. Small felt bag with pendant? silver pendant on a uh, crystal shard pendant on a silver cord. Crystal shard pendant on a Looking at the purpose, does it seem decorative jewelry on a glance? Yeah, it looks like some sort of jewelry. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pendant on a, a cord. Okay. I mean... Does anybody have an appraisal skill? Yeah, that's all me. Give me your appraisal skill. Uh, let's see, it's just rolling 20? Should be a d20 plus whatever the appraisal skill is. Okay. It should be noted on your character sheet. Yeah. Oops. Uh, please give me a d before that 20. Twenty-three. Uh, you know the silver on this cord. The silver cord itself is worth probably five gold, and the crystal shard. Uh, if you find the right market, you could probably sell that for another five gold. So ten gold if you can find the right person. If you're selling it generally, it might only go for like six or seven. Uh, I don't. Uh, unless they ask, I don't inform. Uh, that looks excellent on you, Albert. How much is it worth? Oh, um, I reckon the thing is worth about 10 gold. Hmm, I see. Well, until we verify if it's magical, I think I should hold on to it, because I'm the one who's the most adept at magic, so I can identify it through usage. Makes sense to me. I smirk, and I'm like, alright! Let's, let's go. I feel better now that I have this glorious pendant on me. I'm so glad that I have the torch. <laughs> the <one> torch. <laughs> uh, before we leave, I'm gonna go buy torches. <laughs> um, but I don't give them to anyone. I'm keeping the torches. I did memorize the spell light as one of my three spells for the day. Good. So keep that in mind. We also have that. Uh, what are your other two spells? Um, detect magic and cure light wounds. Fantastic. Wait, aren't you level two 
Jess? No, I'm level three. I leveled level up. Three. So you get second level spells as well. Oh, um... I think you might have more first level spells that you can memorize. I think you're up to... Well, let me double check. What's your wisdom or willpower score? Uh, oh, 15. 15. Okay, so, and you are level 3. Mm -hmm. um, so you should be... You should have four first level spells and two second level spells per day. Oh, sick. Wait, four <coughs> first level spells and two second level spells? And two second level spells. Nice. Um, All right. Are you? you are Algrand Strongax. So, are you able to link me a? Um, I'm link giving you the list of second level spells right now. Awesome. It's going to be in that same list. I just need to change a variable so that your second level spells pop up. Okay. Um, is there anything else you guys would like to do in town before you gather your farmers together and I, head out? I just want to buy a couple torches, so like <laughs> eight copper. But I'll go when the party isn't noticing that I'm not there. Like I'll just be like, oh, I'll be right back, and then I go buy them. Okay. That same spell list should now have uh, all your second level spells as well. So eight copper is four torches? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I tried to conceal them. Uh, I guess you have a backpack you can toss them in? Yeah. Nice. Alright. Let's go. Okay. So, you gather together with a large group of farmers who, well, they, they don't have much to farm these days, so they're going to go out in, around Mount Gull and gather whatever spices and dyes that they can find. Um, and you set off. Day one, you get to Mount Gold. It's only a few miles away, but it's looking pretty thrashed. The storm hit Mount Gold pretty badly. In fact, Mount Gold took the brunt of the storm. That's and what we last week with the hundreds of kobolds, right? Yes, it was. And last week you noticed that the, you know, the area was fairly badly damaged, but you were kind of just focusing on these kobolds burning this other kobold alive, which was interesting of its own accord. But you're right, that is the same location. Um, anyway, what was left of the spices, after, the spices and dyes after the storm seems to have been eaten by rhinoceros beetles. You find large steaming piles of beetle dung and in it, you can see like little bits of red that you know are th this type of root, and you can almost smell the nutmeg on the dung. It's pretty disappointing. One of the farmers mentions that, you know, with, with this looking the way that it is, we're going to have to go to Mountain Value Suvius to find the right things. And they're definitely going to need you there because Mountain Value Suvius is kobold territory. Do you guys have anything you'd like to say before you set off for Mount Value Suvius? Oh, no worries. There's probably a fewer kobolds there. I, I saw a few hundred here last time. <laughs> Their eyes go a little bit wide. And as you head on to Mount Value Suvius, do you relate to them the story that you... the story of you guys finding this place last time? Of course. I will uh, wildly regale them with tales of kobolds performing rituals and burning their own kind and the mass that's there, so we have to watch out from that side. Okay. All right. On your way to Mount Value Suvius, there is a valley. Like, there's one mountain, and there's another mountain, and the area between them is a nice little valley. Uh, and as you are walking through this valley, you come across a troop of baboons. They approach the party, and they wait, start... Wait, 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 Neil. And... Yes? Is the valley called Ooh? Because then it would be Valley U. Get it? Uh, Get no. it? Value? Oh, no, I didn't make my value. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> anyway, continue. Uh, I forgot my joke at the beginning of the show, so I'll tell it at the end. <laughs> the, going. the pun that was hyped up that never happened? Yeah. yeah. That way it hypes up even more, so that it's even more disappointing once I reveal what it was. 
<laughs> Excellent. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Neil. It's okay. The the baboons start whooping and calling and screeching at you guys, trying to intimidate you. They're like hopping around the trees, going woo 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 woo, ha, 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 ha. and making all sorts of fearsome noises. They don't what seem do to be aggressive, to do though, right? Um, they're they're borderline aggressive. None of them have actually attacked you yet, but they're swinging from trees. They're getting kind of close. They're screeching at you, like clawing in the distance. Uh, they're being pretty ferocious, but they haven't inflicted any damage to anybody. No worries. They're all talk, but let me show you <laughs> that I am the master of talk. I, I pop the bongos and I start uh, doing a, a loud beat to counter. Ooh. Ah. Give me a musical check. Whatever your your score for your bongo playing is, roll me that. Alright. While he's doing that, I also like um kind of start like my ears start flicking with the beat a little bit and then I kind of like awkwardly start dancing and you can tell that like I've never been a dancer before, but I'm kinda like into it. I'm not moving at all. Stone cold. Is that 18 your roll? Uh, yes. Ooh, okay. Uh, the baboons do not seem to be reacting to the drum beats at all. Uh, they continue whooping and screeching and calling. One of them starts pooping and then starts flinging its poo at you. Ooh. Yeah. I dodge gracefully. Who does it hit? Bruno. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Or does oh, it hit wow. anybody? It hits some of the, the townsfolk that you're escorting. Oh my god. Oh. I, I smirk, I try to hide it. He like wipes it off of his face, puts it on the ground, and goes, that's disgusting. Yes it is. Yes it is. The, the townsfolk look to you for dealing with this issue. Well, I mean, if they don't attack us, I don't see why we do anything. Okay. It just... Let us continue, townspeople. All right. You march through the valley, and, and as you do so, the baboons follow you most of the way, just screeching and calling and being a nuisance. At some point, they even, like, come down, like, swing down from branch and start, like, batting people on the head or, like, <laughs> tugging on your clothes. They're not doing any damage, but they're clearly trying to drive you out of their territory. I find this extremely entertaining. Like, I'm not outright laughing, but I'm, like, really enjoying myself. So I'm walking along, and like when a baboon jumps down and pats someone on the head, I'm like nodding, like, <laughs> and I'm just walking along. But I do have my halberd out at the ready, just in case any of them gets too fresh. Okay. Um, no, they they pretty much ignore you. Well, not ignore uh, you. Pretty much ignore them, and they harass you the entire way through. But no combat ensues. Well met, baboons. Okay. You finally get to the base of Mount Value Suvius, and the farmers and townsfolk kind of spread out looking for all sorts of things. Pretty soon, a call comes up from one of the, the female farmers that she has found a grove of nutmeg trees, and everyone descends on them to rip the fruits off and get the precious seeds that are inside, because no one cares about the fruit of the tree. It's all about the nutmeg seeds, which are what you grind to make normal nutmeg. I did not know that. I learned mm -hmm. something today. Yeah. Uh, there's a discussion going on. You, you guys aren't all farmers, and so one of the farmers mentions to you that uh, while nutmeg is a wonderful spice, actually his favorite spice of all, you should be very careful when consuming it. You, you just want to put a little bit. If you eat too much nutmeg, you know, you gotta like eat half a seed or something. It can actually cause pretty vivid hallucinations that will last for a few days. So take your nutmeg in small doses. Is that a so, real thing? Or is that a D&D &D thing? It is a real thing. I don't remember uh -huh. the exact duration, but like if you eat a ton of nutmeg, I don't, I don't know how much you have to eat, but if you eat a lot of nutmeg, it reportedly creates long-lasting hallucinations. Well, it is eggnog season, so just sprinkle it right on there, guys. <laughs> I think it has to be like huge quantities not just not take a big nutmeg quality. seed and just plop it right in that eggnog that'll be well i was gonna say before you told me this like as i was waiting for you to finish uh when someone um like picked out like took off the the flesh of the nutmeg fruit 
and like discarded it, I was going to pick it up and eat it. Okay. I don't know what that tastes like, but I'm going to presume it's okay, but not that great. But you can still munch on it. I chew on it like a cow chews cud for a while. I look at the skies and use weather sense. It looks like a nice day. Roll me a weather sense check to see what might be coming up. Uh, I don't have my check. Crap. Oh no, but I'll write it forever. Oh, Jen. Do I find it in the... In no, I'm looking it up. Just. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's been awake for like a whole hour, Jen. He can't deal with this yet. An hour and 44 minutes. This is just a too intense for me. Um, By the way, guys, while he's looking that up, Neil is in the midst of a... It's just the 24 hour, or is this your mega one? This is the 144 okay. hour thing. I thought I saw you like write something about 24 hours today, and I thought that was... Ooh, that I was up a small bunch potatoes. Of things before I went to bed last night, I might have lied on one of them for 24 hours when I meant to write 144. 144 hours, so That's we're getting him at the beginning. It's six days. That's why we're doing misclicks now, but not next week. Is because yeah. next week I would have been awake for 143 hours when we started, and D and D would have gone something like this. <laughs> I think there's a goblin no there's kobolds <laughs> in front of you and um i don't know they're attacking or something roll roll yeah. initiative guys <laughs> yeah. anyway he would have uh, pretty you're... much just been like your characters are dead and we've been like what neil why and you'd be like i'm the dm they're dead <laughs> <laughs> as long as i'm the dm of this show you're all dead <laughs> don't care what you say can we be ghosts no you can't can we be ghouls no you can't can we be vampires no no you can't no, okay. You anyways. can just be dead and sit there quietly. Think on your sit. <laughs> anyway, um, your weather sense check is perception minus one. Perception. Ah, crap. So it's five. Why did I pick this proficiency? This is the worst proficiency ever. So roll d20 plus five. Uh, perception minus one. So if your perception score is five, it's a d20 plus it four. No, no, it was six, so it's fine. Okay, cool. So I just um, it's it. a sunny day, and it looks like it'll just continue being sunny. Yep. Seems no. sunny. <laughs> Seems pretty sunny. Cool. Yeah. So everything's going well. The nutmeg trees are being picked clean when a hush uh, kind of runs through the entire group. Quickly, one of the farmers uh, creeps over to you and says, there's a pair of rhino of bombardier beetles over there. What are bombardier Shh, beetles? Take a look. Uh, did you read that document that I gave you that told you all about the fauna and yes, I yeah? Did, but obviously, I forgot about the bombardier beetles. Does anyone do any of you guys remember what that document that explained all the local wildlife is like? Um, it's kind of a forgettable aspect of this island. <laughs> They're not a forgettable aspect of this island at all. <laughs> my character can't read, so... Right, I'm not it up again. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I gave you this document, is so I could say there's a bombardier beetle, and you guys would know what that is. Well, you know, that was like <sighs> midweek. I I'm sorry, Neil. It, though, I swear. I'm sorry, Neil. I now they I remember that you said harmless that to me. as long as we give them a wide berth. Or... What, what else do you know about them? Some of them spew acid clouds. Ew. From their backsides. From That's their right. backsides. Backside. So. But there's more. Keep reading, right? Oh, wait. There should be more. Um. Not. You trolling? No, I shouldn't be trolling. I totally remember, like, the, the baboons, I knew that if they didn't feel menace, they wouldn't attack us, but I still can't find the bombardier beetles. We just have giant beetles, we don't have bombardier beetles. Yeah, you do. This is what you're... No, it says giant Oh, beetles. giant yeah. beetles. Yeah, there, there are many types uh, of giant beetles. Uh, Some of which you ask Look at the bods, Neo! Look, Look at the bods, bods. Look at the bods, Look at the bods. okay. Um, one of the farmers mentions, and I guess you guys actually probably didn't know this, that's why it's not in the document, that while these creatures can be very dangerous... Oh my god, what is that noise? Um, while these beetles can be dangerous, I'm getting like the weirdest... Is that one of you guys that's doing that? What? What does it sound like? I don't know. There's just... 
Sorry, I got There's a really bad smell. Face. My dog just farted. It smells really <laughs> bad. I'm like um, trying not to breathe. Must be the bombardier beetles. Yeah, yeah, the toxic gases from their backside. <laughs> uh, what creates the acid spewing stuff in them are two different chemical sacs within their abdomens. If you can get those chemical sacs out intact, they're worth quite a bit. However, you know if they shoot off their their acid cloud, then the sacs will be empty and completely worthless. But in a hypothetical world where you can kill one of these suckers and take its acid sacs or its chemical sacs, they're worth like 50 to 100 GP each. Um, anyway. Dangerous? The bombardier beetles, the ones that spew acid out of their backsides? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're kind of dangerous. <laughs> they're not that big. Um, the bombardier beetles are... They're only like four feet long. The rhinoceros beetles were 12 feet long. These guys are much smaller. They're still, you know, big and scary. They're like the size of a desk, a small desk. Okay. Um, anyway, the, the town spoke have kind of pulled away and one of them points it out to you. The bombardier beetles like coming up to the base of one of the nutmeg trees and starting to munch on the roots. Um, if we were to let the bombardier beetles eat nutmeg seeds, and they were to hallucinate, would this be of strategic value to us? Team. We don't know if uh, they're affected the same way, but if they, that certainly could be. Farmer, do you know if bombardier beetles hallucinate? I don't know. But I know the elk in town sometimes will eat fermented apples and get themselves drunk and then rampage through the town, drunk and off their butts. I presume if an elk can get drunk, a bombardier beetle could get high. This is sound logic, farmer. But that doesn't seem like it would help us that much. Might be funny just to watch, he says. <laughs> I agree, I would find this quite amusing. They must sleep. Yeah, I think they sleep in little burrows. Well, large burrows. I prefer not to climb in burrows. What if we follow them to their nesting area? I, uh, for one, have tired of crawling in small spaces after our last endeavor with the spiders. Mm -hmm. mm. What if we wait for them to come back up and trap them at that moment? What if I chop off their heads? You feel free to go ahead and do it, my dear. I think if you get close, they will release the acid. So we're going to have to shoot a very vicious volley at them if we want to get their sex. This is and also you have sound logic. That would help us with that, clerk. Well, I can <clears throat> line them with my light spell but I never got my list of second level spells, so I... It's, it's there, it's the same list as first level. Oh, is it? Yeah, you just have to scroll down a little bit farther. My bad. Um, let me reevaluate that, in fact. You can hear the nice background music coming from Roll20. Sounds of the jungle. It's quite soothing. Yes, the wonderful music provided by the folks over at Tabletop Audio, who releases it for free oh. for all of us to use. I can learn a spell called Nap. Uh, creatures affected by the spell are put to sleep for one hour. Awesome. Sounds you just point and go, confused. Nap, and they just go... Hmm. Probably a version of Neil not wanting to give sleep anymore because I used it too much. Nap is a more powerful spell. How it's a second level spell. Looks like you have to touch them. Um, the, yeah, you have to touch them and only willing subjects oh. can be infected. Well, the nice thing about oh. nap is that you sleep for one hour, but it's the equivalent of eight hours of rest. So you will gain HP oh. and you can rememorize oh. spells. Okay. That's it's kind cool. of like an instant midday, I want to learn new spells spell. That's cool. I think I will take that anyway. Mm -hmm. Also, why is that in this list? That's a wizard spell. How did that get here? 
That's not supposed to be there. No takesies backsies, Neil. Neil. <laughs> and there's now. music of spheres and musical... Oh, wait, no, never mind. No, hold on. Toma Magic. That's legit. It's totally a cleric spell. I'm lying to you. It's fine. Awesome. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I've been awake for Neil. so long. I'm getting a little delirious here. <laughs> um, could I learn speak with animals and be able to talk to animals? <gasps> yes! It get it! All you can learn then yes. It is. Get it! it. Powers it. <gasps> comprehend and communicate with any warm or cold-blooded normal or giant animal that is not mindless. I'm so, so excited! Love and receive we'll answers from the creature. Out if the beetles are mindless. Do you realize what this means? If we find Frank again on the high seas... Frank! Jen, remember Frank! I know, the monkey he already spoke English or common. You don't need speak with animals to speak to Frank. He did? Well, that's why you guys were looking for Frank, because he was a talking monkey. You did you just- you never revealed. Did you reveal just now that Frank actually did speak common? You guys <gasps> met him. He was a jackass. I thought that was not canon. Yeah, when was- It was like a dream. Was that a dream? Anyway, we digress. So Watch Miss Click's D&D &D, uh, Pirate Edition if you want to know who Frank was. But I'm really, really excited that our dream of talking to animals is finally coming true. Homage to Miss Harvey. Whoop whoop. All right. So I guess only you could charm the beetles. Can I? I don't think so. You have a charm person or mammal, but beetles are notably not mammals. And then I also have snake charm. Yes. <laughs> That'll help. <laughs> Unless these are. You know, the elusive snake beetles. <laughs> <laughs> Tons, Neil, do the it's really just a big snake with a beetle shell over it. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, do the townspeople seem to want us to kill the beetles and take the sacks, or do they... Um, they've got their nutmeg, and... While the beetles, beetles may be valuable, you still haven't finished your dock. There is no active trade right now. They're ter they don't want to get anywhere near the beetles, but if you guys want to do your thing, they will sit back and watch. So, it is my opinion... Hmm? Is it something that expires? The... no, they're, they're chemical substances. They should... if you can store them, they're, the, the sacks are kind of delicate, but if you can store them in a safe place, they should last quite a while. Okay. Just don't mix the contents of the sacks. Otherwise, Sheriff, there's a giant acid cloud and die. Sheriff Bongo, it is my opinion that we should save this quest for another time and finish that which we set out to do today. The dock still begs to be built. I wholeheartedly agree. I cannot think of any way to get those sacks, but uh, we should always be looking out for the value. Well said. Value right. indeed. Then I guess let's move on. Excellent. Um, the rest of the day is pretty uneventful. You gather what you can and head back to town. This this quest, this job, is going to take you guys a while to do because you got to go around collecting all these different roots and nuts and plants. It's going to be many. It's going to be like a week and a half or something worth of going around. So you head back to town and go to sleep for the um. night. Can I, for one day of those days, can I switch back to uh, comprehend languages? And I guess every day the the mermen are probably coming out. No, they kind of leave you guys alone. They don't show up daily. Hmm, I see. Um, if you want to try and find them and talk to them, you can, but it will be an endeavor in and of itself. Oh. Um. Oh, I have an idea. Uh, I guess it won't be for today then, but uh, I'll put the harpoon where they put it last time. Hoping that the next morning they show up. Okay. So you... it was like a let's talk sign. Okay, so you stab a harpoon into the sand. Yeah, for the next morning where I'll be there at the same time we did last time. Okay. Hoping they show up and... Um, I would like to ask the fisherman if he found a place for this guy at all. I've been a little busy with other things. Uh, what is more important to get it than getting our docks repaired and getting those mermaids? Well, we're, we're working on the docks. They've let us start construction. I just kind of 
you know, I've been slacking on looking for a place for them to stay. Can you? He says a little stop embarrassed. Stop slacking, because we've been trying to make this town better. Okay. All right. All right. I'll I'll go out tomorrow and look for one. I can know you every day if it can encourage you. Okay. Look. All right. Just all right. All right, Albert. I got it. I got it. I'll I'll do it tomorrow. All right. I remove the spear from the, the thing because we're not ready to talk yet. <laughs> All right. um, anyway, and, let's keep it so I still have it. Uh, and that is the end of day one and the end of hour one of Misclicks, D&D Seaborn. That means that we're going to take a very, very short break. It's usually three to five minutes, so don't go anywhere. There are lots of things you can do during that break. One is to think about the merry adventures we've had so far and think about what you suggest we should do next. Think about which characters you like and which ones you want to malign in the chat. Also, you can use your mouse to find this beautiful purple button down there and click it to follow. Then you'll be notified when Miss Clicks goes live if you want to watch the show in the future. And if you really want to support Miss Clicks, you can also subscribe and be rewarded with some really, really cool emotes. Until then, sit tight and we will be right back. <laughs>